Well, this is Burn the Ship. Um, thanks for joining us. It means a lot to me. Anybody that allocates the time to come and chat with me or, or be on the podcast, it means a lot. I wanted to say that up front. But uh, this is where we introduce entrepreneurs to professionals that can help you go all in on your business. This is the podcast for that. We want to talk to people that have walked the walk and talked to talk and been through all the things that we experience in the small business world so that we can kind of try to pass some of that experience on to that next generation of entrepreneurs. Um, it's been an awesome experience for us talking to all the people that we've talked to, and I appreciate you joining us today as well. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your business. Okay. I am Barbara Bender, and I have a CPA firm. I'm a solo practice now, uh, Barbara A. Bender CPA. My office is located in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Um, I've been out on my own as a sole proprietor for about seven years now. Prior to that, I worked for 25 years with a small company in uh, a small local CPA firm in Snellville. And um, so I did not own that company, but I worked um, as the years went over, uh, you know, I worked there 25 years. And as we went on, um, the owner moved more into financial services, and then I managed and worked um, the actual traditional CPA practice. So we, I did all of the accounting and tax preparation work and managed the people in that division. Um, you know, probably not uh, not a crazy story. I just decided I needed to make a little bit of a change, and I left the firm and uh, decided I was going to be less busy. and created a job for myself um, in my own firm. And as I said, I'm a, a sole practitioner. I don't have any employees other than an administrative uh, part-time person that comes in during tax season for me. And um, so I'm making a living doing this. And in, in my business, I've structured it to where I don't need to hire employees and that's by choice and, and not really common. I think in the entrepreneurship world, um, a lot of times when we're starting new businesses, we want to grow it and, you know, add people and, and add all of those functions on. And, and for me and where I am in my life, um, I just decided that I was just going to maintain this practice and provide a living, you know, what I wanted to do or, or make out of it. And uh, so that's what I do. And I'm focused mainly on tax preparation. I work with individuals, I work with small businesses, and I work, um, I do a lot of probate estate work, so tax returns for um, people that have died in their estates. Um, so, uh, you know, I think when you and I were talking uh, in our introductory call, um, my, like I said, my business, I'm not out growing and doing all of those things, but I understand all of those things because I've worked in that type of business where we were doing that. And I've advised businesses for 30 years on how to open and set up and grow. And, and we also talked about um, this podcast is for entrepreneurs. And I would encourage everyone if they haven't done it yet is to get the book, The E-Myth, Revisited by Michael Gerber. Uh, I think you were familiar with that book as oh, well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it is, yeah, it's the Bible when it comes to really understanding what you're doing when you decide that you're going to open a business. For sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And that's really one of the inspirations of this podcast is that a lot of times when you look up um, content that is relevant to starting a business, it is... Gary V, or it is Grant Cardone, or it is all these sales professionals that are basically telling you how stupid you are because you don't already have a million dollars. That's why I was such a fan of the E-Myth is because the E-Myth looks at it from a very analytical perspective of yes. things that are time well spent and things that are not when it comes to starting a business. Um, but a couple of the things that I wanted to hone in on during during your story, right, is that it's not uncommon to find people transition from a a corporate or from a from some sort of firm, whether it be small or large, into um, building a book of business for themselves. Right? What would you say is the biggest difference between where you are in your business and in your life right now versus someone who is, you know, wanting to start that business, wanting to create their own schedule, wanting to grow and, and be a large firm? What What is really, would you say, is the biggest difference? And, and why did you think that um, 
you know, the, the decision to kind of create a job for yourself was better for where you were in your life. Because I think that a lot of people kind of wrestle with that idea, you know, is people know that they have yeah. a particular skill. They know how to articulate that skill very well. They probably have a large, diverse network of people or um, maybe the people that they're interacting with have, have gotten to the monetary status or age that they could use those services. And how did you kind of differentiate between where you wanted to go with creating that job for yourself versus wanting to, you know, get a firm and add employees and grow, 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 grow. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm hitting on uh, close to 60 now. And um, so I'm not sure um, how many more years I, I intend to work, probably at least another five. But, you know, I've been through that. I've been through that growth stage. I've been through that accept all clients um, so that you can get your business, you know, you can grow your business and you can hire staff and, and that's all good. And, and I'm not, you know, to me, when you're thinking about starting your own business, I don't know that there's a right or a wrong reason to do it, but I do know whichever way you plan to go, that you want to start a company that's a new product or a new service or something you need to have a clear idea of where it is that you want to go and and what type of business you're trying to create. And I think, you know, and, the, and again, reading, I had it with me here, the E-Myth, reading this book really helps you understand that um, when you're the technician, when you have a skill that you know can can provide service to other people that they will pay for, or you have a product that you've invented, or whatever that thing is, whatever that production is, um, you need to really understand, are you going to keep doing that technical work? Or are you going to be that business owner and now take on all of the other things that go with that? Um, but I think for me in my life, it was less stressful to have to worry about growing and managing other people and and you know the accounting industry much like every industry now especially after covid you can't find people to work um the accounting graduates were way down um very difficult to find help and um, for me it would be an absolute nightmare for me to build a book of business to support two or three employees and then have someone leave um, I was trying to get out of my, you know, 50 to 60 hour work week grind all of the time to a schedule that I could manage a little bit better. Can't say that I'm really great at that <laughs> because I still wind up being super busy and overwhelmed. But but I do have those choices on wh who I'm taking on and what I'm, you know, what I'm not going to. But the main thing is I knew I was going to be that technician and I know enough about the other pieces of the business um, that need to get done when you're the owner and the entrepreneur of that business. Um, so, uh, you know, I think this just suits me in my life and heading out towards retirement that I really don't want to have to commit to working 40 to 60 hours a week, you know, and work for someone else. Um, in my my other life, what I do as a, a hobby, I guess, is I'm elected official with the city of Snellville, and currently I'm the mayor um, with the city. So that takes time. And so for me, being able to have a very flexible schedule um, along with supporting my business and my clients has, has worked out really, really well for me in, in my stage of life. For sure. And it, and it seems like one of the skills that you had when you were kind of you know, deciding exactly what you wanted to, to bite off and chew when it comes to your own business is understanding from both an administrative and an entrepreneurial pers perspective of exactly what it takes to run a business in ind any industry, as well as what it takes as far as know-how specific to your industry to be able to yeah. uh, provide a reasonable product or, or service to your clients, right? What would you exactly. say was your, what would you say maybe that or something else is probably the thing that you did best at the beginning of your business that allowed you to grow the way that you wanted to grow? Yeah, I, I took the time to get processes in place um, because, you know, in any type of business, having that set process 
um, having that way you do things and bringing on clients and how you were going to do that and, you know, setting up all of those things that you need done, all of that administrative stuff to make the workflow better um, was really important to get that baseline down first before I got too busy. For sure. And I, I would say, you know, that's where a lot of new entrepreneurs fail uh, I can't tell you how many new business owners I've talked to who come in, you know, it's been a year, they've been out there kind of um, scrambling around, trying to figure things out, and they haven't kept up with books, you know, they haven't kept up with their accounting or their checkbook or don't understand anything related to the taxes. And, and you know, what they've said to me is, well, I hate doing any of that. So I just don't do that well, you know, or I'm not a marketer and I, you know, I don't really, I don't feel comfortable going out and selling myself. And it's like, but, you know, what I always respond to them is, but you signed up for that when you started this business. Absolutely. So like it or not, you got to do it. And, you know, I try to impress upon them, there's a, an organization chart or kind of a workflow chart, and it's got seven departments in it. And, you know, it starts out with marketing and then uh, repeat sales, but it's also the legal side. It's the production where the actual technical work gets done. It's quality review. It's uh, sales and closing business. You know, it's all of these different departments and, and when you start looking at a business in that function, all of those departments have to be working in order for the business to stay viable. If you don't have any marketing going on, there's no potential clients or customers coming in your door. And once you get that customer in the door, you've got to be able to produce and get your product out or provide your service. You've got to be able to have that review, make sure that service was done well. And then you've got to be able to go back and resell. Yeah. And and if all of those things aren't functioning and on the backside of things, if you don't have the legal stuff set up properly, if you're not maintaining your books, you're not maintaining, um, you know, your secretary of state renewals, just all of business licenses, all of those things, your payroll um, and you don't stay on top of all of that, it can be off or not. Right, you know, because you wind up get into a hole or into a situation where you can't get out of. For sure. And do you think that that is the most difficult thing, or maybe the most common weakness amongst new entrepreneurs is the lack of understanding of how to be as versatile as necessary with yes. having to wear all of those hats? Yep, it's really not really having a clear understanding of what those hats are. And it's trying to do things on your own that you have no experience or knowledge on. For sure. Because one of the first things I tell people is if you can get in with a good accountant on the front side of things, let them help you get your book set up and your process set up for how you're going to maintain all of your day-to-day -day activity. Um, not your technical work. But all of those processes, making sure you've got all your right licenses, your right registrations, you know, and get your books set up. Most people can run their books, as, you know, when you've got all of these easy accounting systems, QuickBooks and things like that. If they're set up properly in the beginning and you even just get a couple of hours of understanding and training on what you need to do, it would make your life so much easier. But a lot of people, you know, they're starting out. They don't have a lot of money to invest. And so they that's one of the things that they disregard. And then you wind up coming in a year late to someone and we've got a whole year worth of information that we've got to correct and sort out. And then, you know, it's typically two to three times what it would have cost initially had you just gotten things set up For to sure. begin with. For sure. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I would definitely say get that guidance from a competent lawyer and get a oh, good yeah. CPA who can get you started on the right foot. For sure. What would you say? I know now this this time of year, people are spending a lot of time kind of in that preparation mode for the next calendar mm -hmm. year. 
What would you yeah. say are some of the most important things now to look at at the last two months of the year to let you know what you need to do at the beginning of the year to be successful? I know a lot of people throw that um, around, and I think a lot of people, you know, that it, it makes – um, people feel busy, and it, it really is something that I think people use a lot as a defense mechanism versus sales people have, um, you know, around this time of year, I, I'm too busy, let's meet at the beginning of the year, let's do this, I'm, I'm in preparation, right? So everybody's kind of in that mode. What are some of the best things that people can be doing to spend their time as wisely as possible right now to give themselves a better probability of being successful when the new calendar year rolls around? I think now is a really good time to kind of look back on what you've done so far this year, where you are income wise, expense wise. Do I have things, you know, all caught up and do I know where I am and then project out the rest of the year as far as income and profit goes so that you can look at your tax picture, do a little tax planning, call your CPA, say, hey, I want to just kind of do a check in and see where I am. Do I need to make any more estimated payments? Have I overpaid that and I don't need to pay anymore? Are there some expenses or investments in my company that I should or could make at the end of this year? Um, so it's looking for, is there anything, you know, can you buy some equipment for the business? And, and you know, I've had a few clients in the past that are just, they want to go out and buy something and spend money just to get their taxes down but they're spending money on things that aren't going to make them more money in the future. Right. So if there's something out there that you've been thinking about and you just haven't done like, Oh, I'd love to update my computer or, you know, I'd love to do this equipment or whatever it is. And it's something that's going to give you a return on that money. Then absolutely go do it. If you're going to go just buy a new car because mm. you want to write off on a new car, that's not a good spend of your cash. Yeah. I so, agree. You know, so it's looking ahead like that. And it's also look at what you've done this year and let's set a budget and set those goals for next year. Were we good on the profit that we made this year? Or maybe we need to trim our expenses a little bit next year and let's do that budget out. You know, let's do that cash flow budget for the year to see if there's some some savings that we can have. Maybe we're doing marketing in an area that we re really haven't seen any kind of return on that investment, maybe we cut back on that, or maybe we add a new marketing, uh, you know, opportunity. So it's, you know, take that little bit of time now to just kind of sketch out what you would like to do in the, for the next year. Yeah, absolutely. I think all of the advice that you have given is, is, um, accurate. It comes from a place of experience and it is timely, right? Because people need right. to understand, the way that you spend the end of the year often is very indicative of the way that you start out the year. So if you are spending time preparing right now, understanding what your marketing budget is going to be for the next year, understanding what um, type of profit that you generated this year and what your goals are for next year, and just sitting down to, to give yourself some goals in general and, and understand what that direction is looking like over the next year and three years and five years is, is time well spent. But if you are... Um, convincing you yourself that you are busy in order to delay some of the responsibilities that you know that you're going to have at the beginning of the next year, I, I encourage everyone to abandon that mindset because you only need as much preparation as you need. Everyone is different and, and everyone works in a very different way. Um, so take the time that you need to prepare. It is time well spent, but don't waste time because they're still, you know, the, the last two out of 12 months of the year is, you know, 16 Point six percent worth of worth of time that we need to be selling and and organizing our thoughts and and doing things very well. So um, that's my two cents, at least. At least that's what I what I understand from a financial perspective from as a credit card processor. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I'm a master procrastinator. Yeah, I think we <laughs> yeah, all are. I mean, I, th I think yeah. we all allow ourselves to be yeah. um, from time to time, and and that's just really I think from spending so much time um, with salespeople, managing our salespeople, and making sure that they have what they need in order to outfit themselves to spend the holidays and get their kids the things that they want. You know, we, we spend a lot of days throughout the year making sure that our salespeople have enough, you know, the, the tools that they feel they need to be successful as possible in our right. industry. Right. And that pours right, right into 
that preparation, you know, is understanding, hey, people still need to make money in November and December, even more so. Um, and then in January is can we do some some things for them now that are going to make their lives easier later? So it's it's something that we wrestle with all the time. And, and I just wanted to kind of throw my my two cents and hear your your opinion on that as well as as what can you do well at the end of the year to to spend your time wisely and, and what is not spending your time and your resources wisely. And you, you've given us that. So I appreciate that very much. Um as far as the idea of burning the ship, right? So burning the ship to us is going all in on your business, deciding that, you know, like a like a flip of a light switch, that there's a moment that everybody decides that they're an entrepreneur, that they're going all in on their business and that they're going to make it work. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe everybody has that, that um, moment in some way or shape or form. Um, and everyone's burn the ship is a little different, you know, committing to um, I'm putting all of my eggs in one basket and I'm going to make it work versus, hey, I'm, I'm going to jump all in on this idea of creating a job for myself and giving myself these responsibilities for as long and, and um, for as long or as short as I want to have those responsibilities is, is a similar effect to me. And I wanted to know from your opinion, from a CPA perspective, um, from an elected official perspective that, that interacts with all kinds of small businesses, what does it mean to you to, to burn the ship and go all in on your business? And why should some of these people that are listening that are kicking around the idea of, of starting their business in the next three or six months or two weeks or two years, why should they seek out that same experience as well? Well, I, I think when you when you've got a good idea or when you have a skill that is uh, marketable and, and really would help help people and you can monetize that, you know, it, it does give you um, freedom. Um, and, and I would, I would say, I mean, I, right now I work all the time. I work nights, weekends, um, but it's varied. And, um, but I, <clears throat> I think it can be a fabulous experience to really get out there, believe in what you're doing um, gather those people around you that have that make up those skills that you don't have so that you can learn as you go uh, finding those mentors to help you know it can be a great a great ride it can be a lot of fun it can be very challenging it can be very scary I mean it's just all of those things a huge roller coaster um, especially if you're getting into something that requires a lot of upfront capital and you're you know you're putting a lot at risk to go out and do this maybe you're giving up a really good corporate position or a good salary with benefits um, you know those are all things you've got to consider but it can be uh, you know I've seen some incredibly successful people who have um, have done a great job at building a really good business. And I've seen a lot of people crash and burn. So, yeah. you know, that, that part's a little bit, it, it's a little bit scary too, but I think before you do that jump, before you take that leap, just get a little bit of knowledge first. Absolutely. You know, read, a, read a book like the EMF so that you go into it with a good understanding before you just jump out there and start. Because so many people with just a little bit more information could avoid a ton of mistakes. I agree. I agree. You know, you um, won't avoid them all. You know, you're yeah. going to make a lot of mistakes. So it's just, it's just. The and you're going to learn things. stuff specific to your industry or specific to yeah. the problem and product and service that you're trying to provide. I mean, there, there's never going to be someone that is going to be able to give you all the answers, you know? Right. Um, but there are, you know, to leave people with this, there are people like Barbara, there are people like myself that are more than willing to help you with um, understanding and, and undertaking what it's like to go all in on a business. And even more than that, there are people in your industry that will help you. There are people in um, industries that are adjacent to you that you can create strategic partnerships that can help you. There are, mm -hmm. you know, business service people and um, people non-related to business services. I mean, there, there are so many people out there that are willing to be a wealth of knowledge to you if you extend a hand. So that is why I wanted to say thank you very much for giving us your perspective on small business and exactly what it looks like to... Um, you know, bite off an adequate amount that you can actually chew, right? Because I think that's what yes. we kind of fall into is that trap of, um, 
um, putting too much on our shoulders, not understanding how to divide that labor, not understanding how to do. You, have you read Strengths Finder? I have done that. Yeah, Strengths Finder two. I'm a yeah. big fan of the the Strengths Finder two point is spending the spending as much time as possible doing the one thing that makes you the most profit, right? And and finding mm-hmm. other people to help you with that. So. Um, no matter what, I hope this podcast has been beneficial to you, whoever you are listening. Um, if you have questions or comments, you can always reach out to me. You can always reach out to Barbara. Contact information will be in the description. Um, but thank you very much. This has been Burn the Ship. If you have anything else to leave the audience with, please, the floor is yours. But I appreciate you. I appreciate your, uh, your perspective, and I hope that we can connect you with some people in the future that are good for your book of business as well. I appreciate that. I appreciate the invitation to be on the podcast today. And I just encourage anyone who's who's out there considering, uh, you know, doing something like this. There are a lot of actually free resources out there um, that you could tap into. I know um, I'm in Gwinnett County and the public library system has a ton of resources for a library card. Uh, University of Georgia has uh, the Small Business Development Center. They have... Oh, yeah experts in a lot of different areas, one-on-one consulting uh, that's all free from the Georgia Economic Development Department. Um, you've got SCORE, which is the retired um, retired executives group that does free mentoring and um, free classes as well, SBA. Uh, so a lot of, lot of different resources out there. If you just look around a little bit, you can get what you need to get started. Well, I appreciate you. Um, and there's plenty of people to help, you know, so I hope they lean on us. I hope we can do some cool stuff and I'm looking forward to staying connected with you, my friend. Thank you, Bailey. Cool. Burn the ship.